Good morning on this 20th Sunday of Pentecost. You are listening to a live broadcast from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. Luther Memorial is located at the corner of Nicollet and Prospect, just west of the state capitol. Today's radio broadcast is sponsored by Esther Schluter in honor of the LMC Church Council and Boards. Minister at Luther Memorial is Senior Pastor Craig Wexler. Special music will be provided this morning by Megan and Rod Bauck during communion. Today's organist is Linda Steele. Hymn numbers this morning are 660, 462, 583, and 547. Our service is about to begin, and our opening hymn is Lift High the Cross, number 660 in the Red Hymnal. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Linda, on the organ. Good morning to all of you. It's a nice, beautiful October morning. I, you know, for those that say, God, it's chilly, I say, get over it. Amen? Amen? It's October, and I love October, and I love chilly October mornings, and glad to have you guys amongst us. Um, speaking of chilly, uh, totally pun intended, uh, a few quick announcements this morning, and all of these announcements, quite frankly, benefit our high school youth group. Uh, they have some unique fundraising opportunities coming up. We are taking them to West Virginia next, uh, next summer. Uh, Kelly, myself, and one of my colleagues, Pastor Jamie up in Pollock. Uh, we, right now we have 19, 19 kids coming along, and that's going to be a glorious time. Uh, but we need your guys' help to support them. First of all, next week, one week from today, um, is our fall festival. As we always have, the kids will come with their costumes. They're invited to come and trick-or-treat through the hallways of the church. But downstairs, we have the second annual soup cook-off. So uh, there are plenty of soups already registered. We thank you for that. Uh, I did talk to Reg on the phone the other day. It sounds like the reigning champion with Nefla is possibly returning to defend the title. So um, just come. It's a free will donation. But if, if you love soup, if you love chili, just come and be a part of that. Also, if you notice, there's a little table out in the narthex uh, with pl pink flamingos on it. I know this spring, you're like, oh, we already did the flamingo thing. But we learned something. Putting flamingos in your yard in three-foot snowdrifts and frozen ground is rather difficult. So, right, right? We've got my youth. They're like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So we've got like double the flock this year. If you want to defend your lawn from like 300 pink flamingos being in it, um, sign up for yard insurance, flamingo insurance. You can see them, um, or you can run your risk. And if you run your risk, then you just give a free will donation to get the flock out of your lawn. If you got any questions, see me afterwards, and I'll help you, because uh, I'm a great insurance agent. That's about it, no. Uh, and then the last one, uh, wreath sales. If you see this flyer, take it with you. If you didn't get one, see us this week. We'll certainly print off many more. This is a really easy one. If you want a really nice Christmas wreath or other decor for the holidays, you jump online. You even, uh, even use the code that's up top, and that, the benefits go all to our youth group, and it's even delivered to your door. It's like the easiest, it's like the easiest fundraiser you ever did. So enough with fundraisers, enough with announcements. I invite those who are able to please rise. Let us begin worship, the worship of our Lord in the way we always do with the confession of our sins. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We begin with a moment of silence to reflect.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and therefore by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, our gathering hymn this morning is Lift High the Cross, number 660 in your red hymnals. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. together in our prayer of the day. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We invite the three-year-olds to come down with their parents. Any three-year-olds, Kelly has a message to share and a gift to give. Once you find your pillows, let's come kind of line up and we're going to do a prayer together. So the three-year-olds are getting their first milestone of our faith markers um, here at Luther Memorial. And our pillows are reminders that God is always with us and that we can pray anytime. Can you guys hold your pillows? Can you hold it? Can you give it a big squeeze? Squeeze your pillow. You guys can take naps with your pillows or take them on in a car trip. Have them in your beds. Do you see the little pocket in the front? Do you have a little pocket in the front? There's special cards in there. They have little prayer or prayers on there, so you can practice some prayers with mom and dad. Or you can store little treasures in your pocket. Can you, can you guys pray with me? Should we pray really loud? 
we're going to say, Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for my family and my friends. Thank you for Jesus, who was always with me. Thank you for hearing me when I pray. Amen. Can we give go ahead. Can we give them a round of applause? (laughs) And then at the end of worship, if you guys would come back, we're gonna do the picture at the very end. Thank you guys. You guys can head back to your seats. (laughs) We continue with this morning's reading. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city of Heap, the forfeited city, a ruin. The place of of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities, ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of ruthless was like a a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you you subdued them with the heat. You subdued the heat with the shade of the clouds. The song of the roof of the ruthless was stilled. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain that shroud that is cast over all peoples. He will sheet the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth. For the God, for the God has, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lord, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 23. Please read responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathways for your name's sake. For I walk in my death, I shall feel no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is, is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord this way, my beloved. I use you. E- Iota, and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything... But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be, be, may, be made known to God. And the peace of, of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse in the reading of the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You and the words of eternal gospel comes to us today from the book of Matthew. As a preface to the reading, I remind us that this is the fourth week in a row in which we have a reading right from Matthew 21, verse by verse by verse. Jesus is still on the steps of the main temple, having the great final last will and debate with the chief priests. Matthew chapter 22 has begun. Now once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to, all, to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it. They went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroy, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets, they gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. He said to them, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called but few are chosen. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without the wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Ouch. Amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. The Lord ain't being too nice and polite on this one. Amen? Years ago when I was in college, I was a sophomore in college, my sister was near the end of high school, my parents, they told us as spring break was approaching, they said, Craig, we're going on a family vacation, and I rolled my eyes, and I was like, oh boy, here we go. They said, we're going to Jamaica, and I was like, yes. Anyone been to Jamaica? Wait, one, Carol, yeah? <laughs> Phenomenal, right? All the jerk chicken you can eat, Amen. And it was wonderful. They showed what we were going to be doing, and it was one of those nice all-inclusive resorts. My sister and I, we, we began to get a little excited. And then, of course, on the day that came when I was packing my bag, my mom said, hey, Craig, I need you to know you, you need to pack a really nice outfit. I said, what? And she said, you need to pack a really nice outfit because one of the restaurants we go to one night, you need to have a nice slacks and a button-up shirt. And and if you knew me in my prior life, my slacks were, were jeans and my button-up shirt was a Harley t-shirt. And I said, Mom, um, that really doesn't make sense. She goes, Craig, if you don't wear this outfit, you don't get into the restaurant. And I rolled my eyes, I let out a sigh of a, of a deep breath, and I said, whatever, Mom. 
The days of wearing suits and nice dresses to church are come and gone. The days of dressing up, I, at last I heard, I, I don't think in Congress over in D.C. that uh, they are taking up the debate anymore on the dress code. I mean, dress codes are a thing of the past, amen, for some. But me giving these examples, quite frankly, is just trivializing the, the text before us this morning because Jesus isn't trivializing anything. Jesus isn't just reducing us to a dress code. Jesus is giving one of these last parables. This is, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' final parable to the chief priests as they stand outside that temple court talking about who has the authority, who has the authority to be here, who has the authority to preach here, and who is it that God is electing to be brought into the heavenly realm when that day comes. And Jesus gives them this parable, and, and notice in the parable, notice in the beginning, Again, Jesus uh, talks about this king, this master of the vineyard last week in the parable. This, uh, in this week's parable, we have the king, we have God, who sends out an invitation. There is a wedding. The wedding feast is to be had, and the king is excited. The king is ecstatic that his son is about to be married. And he sends out the invitation into the streets. He sends it out to the, the, the choicest of guests. And what is their response? Nah, I'm not packing that outfit in my suitcase, right? What is their response? I don't really have any need to go to the king and the prince's wedding. The king is disappointed. Disappointed, to say the least. He pulls the servant society and said, hey, I want you to go out. I need you to send out another message. Maybe they didn't get the first invitation. Maybe the postal service lost in the mail. I don't know exactly what happened, but please send it out again. And they go out all throughout the countryside, extending the invitation and again. And again, the response is, some went back home to the farm to work. Some went up north to their businesses. And the rest, they took those tenants, and they beat them and killed them. Again, Jesus gives this image of the prophets showing up, extending the invitation, giving the words that need to be preached. And what do they do? They either ignored them, went back to work, they're more busy in their home, or what did they do? They took those prophets and they beat them and killed them because they did not like the message, the invitation they had to share. The king is furious now at this point. One last try, he sends the servants out, and he says to the servants, he says, you know what, just go gather anyone you see out in the streets. I don't care if they're good or bad. You bring them to the hall. We are going to have a feast. We are having a wedding, and I want people at the table. Beautiful image, to be honest. And the servants, they do that. They go out there, and they gather people. And as the king, as he comes out onto his balcony overlooking the dining hall, as he's preparing himself to make his great entrance, he hears the laughter downstairs. He hears the joy, he hears the clanking of glasses. He smells the rich food, the, the ox and the fatted calf, and they're enjoying the feast. And finally the king comes out on the balcony. And there are people all dressed in the finest robe, that gift of a garment that was given to them as they came into the banquet, as they came into that wedding hall. They were given the wedding garment. Why? Because they are a part of the wedding. They are a part of this feast. They are a part of this gift. And there, the king, with a smile on his face, he finally sees all the guests that are present and accounted for, except he notices the one. I've got to be very careful where I point. Let's remember I'm not the king, right? He notices the one sitting there that does not have the wedding garment, and he approaches him, and it's bold, it's uncomfortable. He says, you kind sir, how did you make it in here without the wedding garment? And the man was speechless. Speechless. What is this garment that we're talking about? This garment is God's pure and utterly beloved 
grace. This garment is the gown that is placed upon all that God has elected. He has placed it on them as a gift to them, as a gift as they enter into his presence, as they enter into the castle, as they enter into his kingdom, as they enter into this place where they finally have the best feast they could ever imagine, waited their entire lives wondering if they ever had the possibility. Remember those who were obviously on the slate. They rejected it. They cast it out. They ignored the invitation. The invitation was given time and time again, and they did not care. But finally, these people who could just long for it, who saw all of the best and the finest make it into the kingdom, they are now there. And that garment, that gift, God's grace is given to them. Not by their own doing, by the way. Notice it really has nothing to do with the invitation. It has everything to do with the gift. So if that garment is grace, let us understand the man without the garment who stands there speechless. I want to read an excerpt from a sermon from Charles Spurgeon back in the late 1800s, right as we were cresting into the 1900s. If you remember what was going on in the world then, we were right on the precipice of the Great War, as it was first called, World War I. We were right on the precipice in which the culture was falling apart. Go figure. Humanity has a, a great history of repeating itself over and over again. These are the words of Pastor Charles Spurgeon. Yes, he was Baptist, but he was one of the finest Protestant preachers of his time. These are his words in regards to this speechless man. Who is the man that has no wedding garment? I should say this first. He is the man who rejects God's revealed gospel that he may follow his own thought and his own wisdom. He says that he is loyal to Christ and he expects all his fellow guests to be firm friends with him for is he not in the banquet as much as they are, he might think. But he does not mean by loyalty what they mean by it. He is among believers, but he is not truly of them. He talks about atonement. He does not mean substitution. He talks about the divinity of Christ, but he does not mean the Godhead of Christ. He talks about justification by faith, but he does not mean the old-fashioned doctrine. He speaks of regeneration, but means evolution and progression. He girds himself with the garment of philosophy, but he refuses the robe of revelation, for the cut of it is too old-fashioned for him. He is no more a wedding guest than he is a Mary Andrew, perhaps not so much so at all. He wears raiment in which the robe of righteousness and the garments of gladness are not to be seen. The looms of free grace and dying love have never woven him a wedding dress. His robe is not of God's provision. It is from his own wardrobe. He glories in his own culture and not in the revelation of God, nor yet in the work of divine grace upon the heart. He is in the church, but he is not in Christ. He has a name to live, but he is dead. The man was speechless. The man was wearing his own wardrobe. He was not wearing the garment, the gift. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not the invitation that matters the most. Notice that the invitation was given time and time again, but oftentimes that invitation, oftentimes that gospel, that good news is rejected time and time again. It's first rejected by those who did not care to even hear the king's invitation. And again, it was rejected by those who were more concerned about the farm and the business. They were less concerned about the feast that is to come. And finally, the king, he sends out the servants. He says, go, I want the people here. I do not want the people outside the kingdom walls. I want them a part of the kingdom. I want them present. I want, this, want them at this meal. I want them to be wedded to my son. And he gives them the gift of the garment. 
But there are some that somehow still heard the invitation, still come into the space, but did not receive the gift of the garment. The garment is a, given by, a gift given by Christ. It's a gift, a gift that's given and desperately needed. At the risk of sounding very, very careful in light of all things these days, all around the world, what we are debating, what we are seeing, are those that are debating the invitation, those that are debating whether or not they want to hear the message, those that are debating whether or not they want any involvement in the wedding at all. All around the world, just as Charles Spurgeon preached over a hundred years ago, we have those that want to proclaim God, want to proclaim the philosophy and the knowledge of it, but have no interest in receiving the true gift of Christ. And it's not a receiving as though we have the ability to actually make the decision. That is what separates what I love, dear Martin Luther, and many of the rest. It's not about your uh, receiving of the invitation. It's not your choice. Notice that there were those that rejected the invitation and notice that there were some that accepted the invitation. At the end of the day, who gave the garment? The king. They did not have the garment. In fact, the one being that came into that presence with his own garment by his own choosing, what was the response? He was speechless, first of all, because standing in the presence of the king, he realized there is nothing to be said, and the king's response is quick and it is harsh. Bind his hand and feet, throw him out into the eternal darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us give thanks that we've been invited into that wedding banquet. Let us give thanks that you've heard the message of the servants, and here you are. Let us give thanks today, right here. Right here is where that garment, that wedding garment is given. Right here is where that garment of baptism, right here is where that invitation is proclaimed. Right here is where that gift is given and placed on. Right here is where we eat and enjoy the feast. Right here is where we no longer have to fear any potential of being thrown or cast out of those, uh, those castle kingdom doors. Right here is where Christ crucified comes to the space and we are part of the wedding. And when we are wedded to Christ, Christ is with us. And when Christ is with us, we have nothing to fear. Amen? And because Christ is wedded to us, because we have nothing to fear, we have the gospel. We have the good news. We have the good news that that judgment of that wedding feast is now absolute 100% love and acceptance of those who have received the garment. We give thanks for that garment. And I end with this thought. This is difficult because we live in a time in which we've been convinced, we've been informed that every single person under the sun is going to be a part of that wedding feast. And as harsh as it sounds to say that, is there the possibility that some might not? Well, Christ is clearly stating that right here in our text this morning. He's looking at the Pharisees, he's looking at the chief priests, and he says, you're more interested in your robes. You're more interested in your philosophy. You're more interested in your own personal truth. But Christ, that is a wedding that we are called to. And Christ is the gift. He is the groom and the church is the bride. We are all a part of that wedding. And that is good news. So dear servants, you too, as soon as this wedding feast is done, we know that there is going to be a feast over and over and over again. And you too are called to make that invitation known. You too are called to bring them to the waters, to the garment, to the, to the wardrobe of God's kingdom in which we too get to reign in that garment. We too get to sit around the table and we too get to stand there in the presence of God, the King, and his smiles over the feast. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite those who are able to please rise. Our hymn of the day is Now We Join in Celebration, number 462.
Number 462 in a red hymnals. As, we, uh, as our baptismal family comes and gathers and gets settled, I invite you to be seated, and if a couple brave soldiers would be willing to come and be our ushers, then we'll send around the offering plates before our sacrament of holy baptism. As we gather together today, we gather actually in both sacraments this morning, and it is a gift to be a part of Christ and Christ to be a part of us. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Anna baptized into Christ? If so, answer, we do. As you bring Anna to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring him to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments 
to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Anna may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, to care for others in the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Anna grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Anna and their parents and, uh, in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, we do. People of God, members of Lutheran Memorial Church, do you support Anna and pray for her and her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. I ask you to profess your faith, your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. I ask you the same questions Martin Luther asked over 500 years ago. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in, the, in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Mom, if you want to lean Anna on over. Oh, don't worry. It's got me. Oh, it's a little chill. Oh, yeah. Anna, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Oh, smile. And then Son... And the Holy Spirit. Here you go, Mom. And Anna, with this oil, we anoint you with the cross of Christ forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. You cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Anna with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Anna, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Do you think your brother might help me? You want to help me, bud? Should we go light? Should we go light your sister's candle? Sit on up here. You want to hold it? So what we do each worship service is this is the Christ candle. When we light this candle, we remember... That the light of Christ always shines. Will you light that candle for me, bud? Oh, keep holding it. Keep holding it. Oh, we gotta let that wax melt off. Oh, keep going. There it is. Be very careful. Take it back to your dad. Take it back to your dad. There you go, bud. Thank you. I encourage you guys to light that every year on her baptismal birthday or as often as you want. They are free if you run out. It would be a great problem to have. Pastor, we ran out of our baptismal candle. We want to remember our baptism so much that it burned out. We gladly give another candle away. Anna, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized together with these words. We welcome you into the body of Christ here at Lutheran Memorial and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you, God. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me. 
Jeff, if we could go ahead to the offering prayer, I'd greatly appreciate that. Let us join together uh, in this prayer. <clears throat> One more, Jeff. I know, I'm throwing you guys for a loop today. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we ask you to enter into our lives this day, and we ask you to give us your gift of the wedding garment. Place your robe of grace and redemption upon our shoulders. We are unworthy of such a gift, but instead of standing there speechless on the judgment day, you have given us the ability to cry out the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We thank you for this gift. We thank you for the garment. We thank you for the feast before us. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we ask you to be with all the people of the world this day and to bring wholeness to the body of Christ. We pray that amongst the violence in Israel and Gaza, that your light would shine into the darkness. We pray that your light be cast upon the innocent lives caught between the chaos. We pray that your light in Christ would find its way into the hearts and minds of those who have been put into the position to fight. We pray that your light would break through the shadow of evil. We pray that your light would break forth a gospel message of good news in which death would claim no ground and that new life and reconciliation with you would overcome all things that this world clings to on this side of the grave. Lord, in your mercy. And God of strength and healing, we ask you to continue being present with all the families on our prayer list, especially Shelley Shinos Conley, Ron Winter, Jamie Siner, Kirk Fridley, Jackson Robinolt, Jill Wellhouse, and Guy Rapp. Give them peace and comfort amongst their struggle. We also lift up the Schwellenbach family as they grieve the loss of Bob Schwellenbach this weekend. May they cling to your resurrection promises and know that his grace abounds. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink. And he said, in this cup is a new covenant to my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we gather at this table, let us gather in the prayer our Lord first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, communion this morning is with the bread and the individual cups. The red liquid is the wine, the clear liquid is the grape juice. Anyone needing the gluten-free option that is front and center as you come in line, through the line, take that if needed by all means. All are welcome to this table, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Jesus, the shepherd of my soul, all of my needs supplies. By living waters, 
Jesus gives me rest, keeping me by his side, bringing my wandering spirit back when I forsake his ways, leading me for his mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. Jesus, the shepherd of my soul, when in the valley deep, death like a shadow hides my way, still you are leading me. I will not fear the darkest hour, faithful you fears Jesus, the shepherd of my soul, keeping me from all harm, ever until he leads me home, safely into his arms. When I be and mercy from his hand surely has followed me. When I behold him face to face, then I will look and see goodness and mercy from his hand.
I invite those who are able to please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and forever give you his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Before the singing of the doxology, I want to leave, you, leave us with this. I shared this with our congregation last night as well. In light of this week's events, um, many have asked, yes, indeed, our trip is canceled, and there is no date to, to reschedule available to us. I will also say this. Because of mixed messages and all of the media as to what you're supposed to believe, even our church leadership cannot come up with a concise discernment on how to respond I will tell you this, I implore you to come to the church if you are wrestling with what to believe and how to navigate the conversations of what's going on across the ocean. It's near and dear to my heart, Israel is near and dear to my heart. Everyone that is involved in the situation needs prayers and the the church is the body of Christ that is called to pray and is called to navigate how it is that we deal with the warfare of spirituality and everything around us. Amen? Amen. So I implore you, before you make judgment statements based off of what every narrative wants you to say and wants you to believe, there are hundreds of thousands of years of history and things to understand. And the place, the church, is where we should wrestle with that. It's an open invitation. You can stop by my office at any time, sit down and say, Pastor, what do we do? What do we say? What do we think? I want to leave you with that, and we close with our doxology and sending hymns. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face on you and give me peace. Amen. 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 Shall unite us to work for your kingdom.
Sunday school starts momentarily. Adult Ed, also go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. This concludes our Sunday morning worship service from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. Join us for worship on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Saturday evenings at 5.30 p.m. for our contemporary service, or Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. If you're unable to attend any of our three worship services, you are, are invited to tune in to our live radio broadcast at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning on KGFX 1060 a.m., 103.1 f.m., or on DRG News by clicking on Listen Live. Saturday and Wednesday services are also live streamed on our LMC Facebook page. You can catch our sermon podcast on an app of your choice or right from our website under the media tab. This morning's broadcast was sponsored by Esther Schluter in honor of the LMC Church Council and Boards. Our radio broadcasts rely on financial support from members of Luther Memorial and other regular listeners and viewers. If you would like to sponsor a radio broadcast in honor of a special occasion, or in memory of a loved one, please contact the church office at 224-8608. On behalf of Pastor Craig Wexler and the Congregation of Luther Memorial Church, we extend our prayers to you and yours for God's care and guidance throughout the coming week. Amen.